Welcome back. My name is Daniel Caproni, and this is my ACT Prep channel. If you're joining us for the first time today, then welcome, because today you're joining us for fractions. 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 I know. People either love them or hate them. Most hate them. But they are absolutely necessary for you to do well on the ACT test. You know what else is absolutely necessary? Making sure that this isn't the only video you watch to prepare for that test. So. Go ahead and click subscribe so that you can get weekly updates of your ACT prep from your man, Mr. Caproni. With that, let's go ahead and dive into this video's material. Remember, we are still in the pre-algebra section of the ACT topics. That covers about 23% of the entire math content. Now, fractions is only one piece of that topic, but because I don't want to overwhelm you guys, remember, we're breaking down each of these topics piece by piece. So today we'll be focusing on fractions, which is going to be a little bit different than the last two that we've covered. The reason for this is because, as you can see here, the sample questions for fractions are never really directly straightforward. Instead, it requires you to know everything about fractions and be able to apply them to specific questions. In addition to questions like this directly about fractions, you also will be using fractions to cover a bunch of other topics, like slope or trigonometry or anything to do with probability. In order to handle all of that, I'm just going to give you guys some tips and tricks today that will help you handle fractions across the board. Starting off, there are three major things you need to know how to do. You need to know how to simplify fractions, you need to know how to compare fractions, and you need to know how to do computations with fractions, all right? Now that may seem easy, but honestly, it's kind of hard for me to describe to you because there's a lot of different methods to handle this, and the number one thing I can tell you to do is to know how to use your calculator. There are a ton of calculators out there. I'm not going to say one is necessarily better than the other, but I can tell you that I recommend calculators in another video based on what I can really help you with. So when I'm going through my videos, I'm going to give you guys tips on the TI-8384 and the TI Inspire. Otherwise, though, as long as you know these basic things on your calculator, you should be good to go. You're going to need to know how to do things like convert decimals to fractions. You need to be able to go back and forth very quickly. You need to know how to do things like simplify fractions. You should be able to do that quickly and easily on your calculator. You need to know how to convert mixed numbers to improper fractions and back. And lastly, you should know all basic fraction computations. Usually that means properly placing parentheses in your calculator so that it knows you're dealing with fractions. Now here's a question directly off the math ACT. As you can see, they're asking you to put these fractions in increasing order, all right? Now, there are three different methods I would suggest using for this, and I can't tell you which one's gonna be best. Really, that comes down to what you feel most comfortable doing. The first method I'm going to go through quickly is just reasoning through it, general understanding of what fractions are. So when I'm looking at these, if I were to think out loud my process of going through these numbers, I'm looking, the first thing I would do is say, all of these are improper fractions. And it would make a lot more sense to me if I switched all of these to being mixed numbers, because it's a lot easier then to compare the fractions to each other. So when I'm looking at five over three, instead, I'm probably going to think of that as one and two thirds, all right? Then as I'm looking at seven over four, I'm probably going to think of that as one and three fourths. And then for the six over five, that's going to be one and one fifth. And for the nine over eight, I'm looking at one and one eighth. Now, once I see that, I see all of these really have one in front. So what I'm actually ordering is two over three, three over four, one over five, and one over eight. Now, off of basic understanding of fractions, one over eight is smaller than one over five. So this is gonna be my smallest number. So nine over eight should be first. So we already are down to either A or B. Then after that, it's going to be the one over five. Then it comes down to which one is smaller, two thirds or three fourths. My general understanding tells me that two thirds is going to be smaller than three fourths because three fourths is closer to a whole number. So that means that my next number should be our five over three and ending with the seven over four, telling me that A should be our final answer. Now, the second method I would use would be converting all the fractions to decimals. That is really easy to do if you know how to use your calculator. For a TI Inspire, I would just go ahead and hit Control Enter and it would give me all the decimals. And for a TI 84, I can just go into the math menu and that allows you to switch back and forth between fractions and decimals easily. 
Once you would do this, you would see that these four numbers would actually become these decimals. You would have 1.6 repeated, you would have 1.75, 1.2, and 1.125. Looking at this, I can quickly see that the smallest number is the 1.125, or the 9 over 8. Then I see 1.2 would be next, followed by 1.66, and then 1.75, which means again we are going to be at A as our answer. Now, the last type of method I would suggest is by switching all of these fractions to have a least common denominator. This is probably going to take you the most amount of time, but it can be useful to be a bit quicker for other types of questions. The easiest way to make a ton of fractions into one common denominator type fraction is by just multiplying all the bottom numbers together and then matching all the top numbers to go with what your new bottom number is. If I take 3 times 4 times 5 times 8, we get 480 as our common denominator. Now that's not the least common denominator, but that is a common denominator for these numbers. So if I'm looking at this, then I would take the five and multiply it by four, five, and eight, the seven by three, five, and eight, the six by three, four, and eight, and the nine by three, four, and five. When you multiply those numbers, you get 800, 840, 576, and 540. Now, once you have those, you can see very easily that 540 is your smallest number, followed by 576, then 800, and then 840. Switching fractions that have a common denominator makes it very easy to compare them and is a valid method for doing a question like this. You can apply these same three methods for other questions like this one. Which of the following is not equivalent to 5 over 6? It is very common for the ACT to do things like, which of these answers fall in this? Or all of these answers work except for, and they'll have you pick one of the answers based off of that. In terms of 5 over 6, if I use my first method of just understanding fractions, I know that fractions are equivalent if both the top and bottom can be multiplied by the same thing to get the new fraction. So 15 and 18 are both multiples of three of these two guys, so that works. Again, when we're looking down here at 30 and 36, those are both multiples of six from the original two. And negative five and negative six are just multiples of negative one, and 10 and 12 are both multiples of two from the original numbers. That means that 50 and 66 are the only ones that are off because 50 is a multiple by 10 with the five, whereas 66 is actually when you do six times 11. So that would give you that 50 over 66 is the one that is not equivalent to the original 5 over 6. Now you could use the other methods from before as well. You can convert all of these to decimals and see which one has the same decimal answer as this. You would find the one that doesn't and the first one that doesn't, you circle that answer and you're done. With the least common denominator or just a common denominator, you would have to switch all of these, which could take a really long amount of time. But if that's the only one you remember how to do, then go for it. And it would still give you the same answer of 50 over 66 not being the same. Now, here we have three other types of math ACT fraction questions. Notice, they don't really have you working with fractions directly. They more ask a question that involves your understanding of fractions. So. I want you to go ahead and pause the video right here and see if you can answer these three questions on your own. And in just a moment, we'll go ahead and come back and do them together. In this first question, it asks you to basically find out how many one eighth inches you could fit in two and a half inches. There are tons of ways you can do this, but in general, it turns out being a division problem. You're essentially saying two and a half divided by one eighth. Now, Again, I would recommend using a calculator, and if you just do two and a half divided by one eighth in your calculator, then it gives you an answer of D with the 20. Um, but if you want to do that by hand, you could write that all out, and instead of saying two and a half, you would probably want to switch that to have a common denominator, which means you would go ahead and switch the one half to four over eight, and two is just eight and eight, so that gives you 16 total. So 16 plus the four would be 20 over eight. So then you would just essentially do the 20 divided by 1, which gives you 20 is straightforward as well. So you could do it in your head, but it might take a lot of you guys more time to do that than just plugging it in your calculator. For this second one, we're looking at one ninth of a budget is used and then one sixth of a budget is used. So in that case, what you're going to do is say, all right, if we've used one ninth of something and one sixth of something, I need to know the total amount that I've used. So you just do one ninth plus one sixth. Once you do that, you get a new number. That fraction ends up being 
what, five over 18? So then once you get five over 18, that's how much you've used. So just do one minus that and it'll give you what's left over, which would be the 13 over 18 as an answer, H. And this last one, what rational number is halfway between one fifth and one third? Well, in order to do that, you can go back to our common denominator answer and we can say, all right, one fifth is actually going to be the same as, let's see, the number to use here, five and three would be 15. So that would be three over 15 and five over 15. Well, if I have three and five, what number is between those? Four. So your answer for 42 would be J, four over 15. So again, here are the three answers squared off for you. I hope you guys were just as successful as I was in getting them. Well guys, that's actually going to be a wrap for today. I know we've covered a ton of stuff here and it may not feel like we've looked at all things fractions. Honestly, if you need to go back to look at the basics of fractions of adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, you can do that via a lot of other videos through like Khan Academy or something like that. But I think it's a lot faster for you just to learn how to do those in your calculator. And remember, the name of the game is time when you're dealing with the ACT. So you want to make sure you can do these questions as quickly as possible. Now, with that said, we will still be covering fractions as we go through the rest of these videos when they pop up in other situations like slope or trigonometry or probability. So don't think that this conversation's over. This was just a starting point, and I hope you guys found it helpful. Now remember, if you did find it useful in any way today, go ahead and smash that like button for me and click subscribe if you want to continue getting these ACT prep videos. I hope you guys found something useful and with that, have a wonderful day.